Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, April 6th, 2012. Hopefully you guys had a nice week. It's been pretty cold here. We had some nice weather a couple weeks ago, but now it's cold again. We have a few inches of snow every morning, but it melts throughout the day. So I'm hoping that soon the weather is going to change and stay warm for good for the summer. And before I get started, I want to welcome all my new subscribers again. And if it's the first time you watch this little program, what I do is I answer questions in regards to small engines that I receive from my viewers throughout the week. And to get started, the first question I got from a YouTuber last week is why does my chainsaw chain keep turning even when the saw is idling? Well, the most common problem for this is that your idle screw may be set too high. You may have to turn it back a bit. But another culprit to this problem is that the clutch springs are worn out. So for example, on this chainsaw here, all you'd have to do is if it's idling too fast is go over here and turn the screw out to make it idle slower. It's not adjusting the air fuel mixture to the carb. These are the screws for the air fuel mixture. This is only the idle setting. Now it appears that the YouTuber had done this already and when his saw is idling, the chain still wants to move forward a bit like that. So as I mentioned, usually what causes that are the clutch springs. And what I have here is a clutch from a Poulin or Husqvarna chainsaw and the spring on this one is just one circular spring. Even though the spring may not be broken, it may be stretched. Therefore, when the saw is idling, it's grabbing the clutch and making the chain turn. So remember, the spring does not have to be broken to have to be replaced. Sometimes though, you may take this apart and the spring may be broken in half. So it's pretty well easy to figure out at that point. But like I said, even if it's not broken, you should still replace it. Now on some steel chainsaws, you may have three springs like this in the clutch, not one like this. So you would just have to replace all three springs. Another question I get sometimes is people ask me, what does a scored piston and rings look like? I just happened to get this Poulin chainsaw in yesterday and it's got a scored piston and rings. And if you look through the exhaust port here, the muffler is off, you can see it's all scratched up. So if your chainsaw won't run good, take the muffler off, look inside. If it looks like this, then that's probably your problem. And in my hand here, I have a piston and rings from a steel MS-180. And this one's scored up pretty bad. What can cause this is sometimes carbon will break away from the exhaust port, get in there and cause havoc like this. Another thing too is sometimes people don't put enough oil in their gas and the saw can overheat. And what I have here now is what a piston should look like. This has a bit of wear and tear, but it's nice and smooth. It's not all scratched up. So if your piston and ring or rings look like this, then it's still good. And if it's all scratched up like this, then you need to repair it. Another question I get sometimes is, where can I get a crank seal and a bearing for a chainsaw that the parts are no longer available for? Well, a good place to get those is a hydraulic shop. They can get a lot of different bearings, they can get a lot of different crank seals or oil seals for different applications. It's just unbelievable what they can get you. So sometimes before giving up on an old chainsaw, go check a hydraulic shop or a bearing house and you may just find what you need. And sometimes too, the bearings will be a lot cheaper from a place like that than if you were to buy them from the actual manufacturer of your equipment. In my next question, a YouTuber asked me, how do I know which is the intake and the exhaust valve on my engine? Well, here's a valve in case you're not sure what a valve is. This valve here is an intake valve from a Briggs & Stratton engine. So if you had your engine apart, usually the bigger valve is the intake valve. So therefore, the exhaust valve would be a bit smaller in diameter than this one. Now, if you follow the intake port from the carburetor, it will go to the intake valve. If you follow the port from the muffler, it will go to the exhaust valve. A question I got the other day is, how do I put away my snowblower if it has a metal fuel tank on it? Isn't it gonna rust inside if I empty it out? Usually just by having fuel in the gas tank, at least right up to the top almost, so that no bare metal is exposed inside the fuel tank will prevent it from rusting. I've done that with many motorcycles in the past and what I do too is I add a bit of oil to the fuel, mix it up, put it in the fuel tank, and in the spring you can always take out the mixed gas if you don't want to burn it in your motorcycle 
or your snow blower in the next season. And then I just put fresh gas in and it's ready to go and there's no rust inside the fuel tank. Most snow blowers though nowadays have a plastic fuel tank so you don't have to worry about that problem. The only engines that I run into that problem with the metal fuel tank are the older Briggs and Stratton engines. You can see it's a metal gas tank. I make sure that the fuel is right up to the top when I put these away for the winter time. If ever you've had to replace a fuel tank on one of these and you've had to buy it brand new, you know that they can be quite expensive. Sometimes the tanks get so rusted that no matter how much you try to clean them inside, there's always rust building back up and getting into your carburetor, clogging it up, and then your engine doesn't run right. I've seen the rust get so bad that sometimes you just have to replace the fuel tank. Avoid that problem, just follow the procedures that I told you previously. I'm sure other YouTubers will comment as to how they put away their equipment with a metal fuel tank and you can read their comments as well under this video. Now since it's springtime people are taking out their lawnmowers so I'm getting a lot of questions about people's lawnmowers not starting. Now the most common problem will be bad fuel in your lawnmower. First make sure you have spark at the spark plug and then the next cheapest thing to do is just to replace the fuel. Now if you have a hard time getting the fuel out you can always use a baster like this. It's a turkey baster. Just suck the fuel out and dump it in the appropriate place. Put fresh gas in there and try it out. Sometimes you can spray a bit of quick start or penetrating oil or a bit of fuel into the spark plug hole. Put the spark plug back on just to get it going and then it's going to start easier with the fresh fuel. I've seen some lawnmowers sit with fuel all winter. People said the gas still looks good. It actually didn't smell that bad, but it wouldn't start. For some reason, the fuel has to be nice and fresh in lawnmowers. And I've also seen the fuel taken out of a lawnmower that wouldn't start with it, work in the lawn tractor, or something else. It just seems sometimes that lawnmowers are a bit more sensitive to how old the fuel is in them. So guys, that'll be it for this week. I got a lot of work to do. I also want to thank you guys for all the comments on the welding cart video series. I appreciate all your tips and tricks that you guys have offered me and even the other websites for me to check out and the other YouTubers videos as well. And if you guys have any metal fabrication projects that you videotape, just feel free to post them as a video response to either this video here or the welding cart video series. It's always nice to see what else people are doing out there. So guys, have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.